Have you ever wondered why a man can be inconsistent toward you, even if he is a nice person? It's possible that he may be a playboy, and his behavior could cause you to feel like everyone will act the same way. His inconsistency may affect all areas of his life, unlike others who have understandable reasons for wavering. In this video, we will explore some practical reasons behind this behavior even in godly men. But before we continue, please take a moment to like this video and subscribe to our channel. By doing so, you become a part of this loving and supportive community, where you'll find strength, encouragement, and spiritual guidance in your marital journey. Firstly, when it comes to building a relationship, Christian men often wonder how persistent they should be when pursuing a woman that they're interested in. It's important to strike a balance between showing confidence and seeking progress while also respecting the woman's boundaries and making her feel comfortable in the relationship. One common issue that arises is inconsistency. A godly man may struggle with understanding how much attention to give to a woman in a mature way. Being too aggressive and pushy can make the relationship unbearable for the woman, especially if she has had negative experiences in the past. Conversely, some women may want a man who is consistent and forthcoming with his feelings towards her, as it can help build trust and security in the relationship. It's also important to understand that not all women want the same level of consistency. Some may be more reserved and prefer a slower pace, while others may be more open to more frequent communication and dates. A man who is unsure about the right time to pursue a woman may exhibit inconsistent behavior but it's important to communicate openly and respectfully to avoid making the woman feel uncomfortable. Looking at the Bible, we can find an example in the story of Rebecca, who gave a clear answer when asked if she would go with Isaac. When you have made a decision, it's important to act on it promptly to avoid mixed signals and to ensure that both parties are on the same page. A godly man should aim to strike a balance between confidence and respect when pursuing a relationship with a woman. Understanding and respecting her boundaries and preferences is key to building a healthy and successful relationship. Secondly, it's not uncommon for a man who aspires to be godly to struggle with inconsistency when approaching a woman. While some may view this inconsistency as a sign of sinful behavior, it's important to understand the difference between sin and misconception. According to the Bible, Sin is a deliberate action that goes against God's commandments. It's a willful and dangerous act that brings harm to oneself and others. Misconception, on the other hand, is a lack of understanding or knowledge that results in negative consequences for oneself or others. Therefore, it's crucial to differentiate between a man who is being inconsistent for immoral reasons and one who is simply making a mistake. Some men may struggle to approach a woman in the right way because they lack the knowledge or experience to do so. They're not intentionally acting immorally, but rather they are trying to figure out the best way to pursue a woman they're interested in. If a man's affection is genuine and he is a believer, he will seek guidance from God on how to approach the situation. It's important to observe his behavior over time to determine if his intentions are pure. If a man is being inconsistent because he is trying to pursue a woman, then patience is key. Allowing him to navigate this phase of life will lead to a stronger and healthier relationship. It's important to remember that a man may not be a great partner from the beginning of a relationship. However, with patience and understanding, he has the potential to become an exceptional partner. Thirdly, it's not uncommon for a godly man to behave inconsistently towards you when he notices that you are being inconsistent towards him. You might feel you're being tricked by his actions, but he's reacting and reciprocating based on his own experiences. It's possible that your own inconsistency might be the reason for his actions, making it feel as if he is inconsistent. For instance, as a woman, you might have had a past experience where you misunderstood a man's level of affection for you. As a result, you might be extra cautious and guarded, thinking that when a man pursues you, he doesn't like you. Instead of seeing his affection for you as interest, you might view his inconsistency as a sign that he doesn't like you. Consequently, you start analyzing his every move, expecting him to be inconsistent. 
This can lead to a vicious cycle. The man might think that you are not interested in him and can start being inconsistent later. Therefore, it's crucial to be aware of your own behavior and how it might be perceived. If you have been hurt in the past and have now recovered, starting a new relationship won't be a bad idea if you believe you're ready for one. However, you might still have fears about getting hurt again. These lingering fears, if not handled properly, might compete with your affections. When a man starts pursuing you, it's important to be consistent towards him. But if you allow your fears to creep in and get the best of you, they might lead you to being inconsistent with him. Unfortunately, your inconsistent behavior will then affect his attitude towards you. It's important to remember that men are not computers or machines. If they feel sidelined by you, they will act the same way. If they feel cherished by you, they will respond in kind. Therefore, before writing off a man's inconsistency, it's crucial to examine your own behavior and see if you have been consistent towards him. Fourthly, a godly man may act inconsistently towards someone he has affections for because he is unsure if he's ready to commit to a deeper relationship with them. This kind of behavior can be a sign of immaturity. When a man intentionally acts inconsistently, it shows immaturity. A godly man who isn't ready to date you should be able to acknowledge that and say, I shouldn't be fooling around right now. I shouldn't play with a woman's heart. However, not all men are capable of this. Some men genuinely want to pursue their spiritual journey but still struggle with spiritual immaturity. If a man is unsure about the relationship, it's important to give him the benefit of the doubt and be patient with him. He may be processing his thoughts and trying to determine if it's God's will for him to pursue the relationship. If he's genuinely seeking God's guidance, it's best to be patient with him and give him time to figure things out. If you find that you're waiting too long for him to make a decision or if the relationship just isn't working, it may be time to consider moving on. Remember, it's important to always prioritize God's will for your life and your own well-being and happiness. Then last but definitely not least, communication is key in any relationship but misunderstandings can still arise. One common example is when a man and a woman have different expectations about the frequency and mode of communication. For instance, a man might think it's perfectly fine to wait a few days before contacting his date after the first meeting, while the woman might expect him to reach out sooner. Similarly, he might feel that replying to her text messages is sufficient, even if he doesn't call her while she might feel offended by this. The root of the problem is that the man intends to see the woman in person, but she wants to have frequent communication even when they can't meet in person. The man believes he's being consistent by reminding her of his feelings for her. However, this doesn't feel consistent to the woman because she is not seeing the same frequency of interest. Situations like this can lead to misunderstandings and frustration. It's important for both partners to communicate openly and clearly about their expectations and needs to avoid such misunderstandings. According to Philippians 2.4, the Bible reminds us to consider each other's interests and not just our own. Therefore, it's important to communicate effectively and resolve any misunderstandings. A good man will want to settle any misconceptions so that both partners can feel happy and satisfied in the relationship. If you found this video uplifting, kindly give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Your support enables us to expand our reach and help more people in their marital journey. If you're a Christian woman, one of the ways you're going to identify the person that God wants you to marry is by this man identifying himself to you. So how's he going to do that? Here are three common ways that God will lead this man to identify himself as your future husband. Love is the force that binds us, the melody that harmonizes our existence. It's the pursuit that fuels our days and the quest that defines our lives. We yearn for it, we seek it, and we can't fathom existence without it. Now, when you're genuinely in love, it's more than just a feeling. It's a profound connection that intertwines your destiny with another. The question that often lingers is, how do you discern if this love is the one that's meant to last a lifetime? How do you identify the man you should marry and spend eternity with? 
For Christian women, the answer lies in a divine revelation, a subtle yet powerful sign from God. It's about your future husband identifying himself to you, guided by the divine hand orchestrating the symphony of our lives. Let's delve into four profound ways God may lead this man to identify himself as your destined partner. Firstly, God may speak to him through prayer. A man genuinely connected to God will seek divine guidance in every aspect of his life, including his love life. Through prayer, he aligns his heart with God's will, paving the way for divine intervention in your relationship. A man destined to be your future husband will exhibit qualities rooted in faith, patience, kindness, and humility. These virtues aren't sporadic, but form a consistent tapestry of his character, revealing a deep-seated commitment to his relationship with God. When God unites two souls, their spiritual aspirations align. Your future husband will share a vision for a life centered on faith, love, and service to others. This shared spiritual journey becomes a compass guiding both of you towards a purposeful union. Always make sure to pay attention to divine confirmations. God often provides confirmations, subtle signs affirming His hand in your relationship. It could be through dreams, scriptures, or the wise counsel of spiritual mentors. These confirmations serve as divine whispers, reassuring you of the path laid out by God. Secondly, in the realm of Christian dating, the dance between pursuit and response is sacred. You're not expected to be a passive spectator. Instead, you play an active role in setting the stage for your future husband's arrival. Think of it as a carefully orchestrated symphony, where your actions compose the melody that draws him near. Consider the dual nature within every Christian, the tension between the new and the old self. Romans 7, 18-20 your future husband is navigating this tension too. In his new nature, he deserves a godly partnership, a woman to stand by him and nurture a family in the fear of the Lord. Ephesians 5, 29, 1 Peter 3, 7, 1 Timothy 2, 15. However, the old nature seeks instant gratification, pulling him towards worldly pleasures. As a woman of faith, you have the power to influence this journey. Rather than leaving him to decipher your intentions telepathically, be proactive. Arouse the right desires in him by embodying the qualities he seeks. It's not about playing mind games. It's about aligning your actions with the biblical virtues that make a woman a godly partner. Avoid being a stumbling block by understanding the battle within him. If you intentionally stir his fleshly desires, you risk pushing away the very man you hope to attract 1 Corinthians 6.18, Proverbs 5.8. Instead, showcase the beauty of biblical modesty and maturity. 1 Peter 3, 1-6. Let your feminine beauty designed by God become a beacon that draws him towards the path of righteousness. Proverbs 30, 18-19, 1 Corinthians 7.36. Thirdly, your future husband will identify himself to you by being what you want, what you need, and what you didn't expect. Imagine this, the man God has chosen for you is a perfect blend of your desires and your needs. A tapestry woven with threads of passion and patience. It's not about wishful thinking, it's about a partnership crafted by the hands of God Himself. In real life, relationships aren't painted in the shades of a romantic movie. There's the nitty-gritty of daily life, the trials, and the blessings that mold your journey. Your future husband will be more than just someone who checks the boxes on your checklist. He'll be the one who challenges your weaknesses and gently exposes the unhealed wounds within. The beauty of a godly relationship lies in its ability to enrich blessings through hardships. As Psalm 139, 5-6 beautifully expresses, you hem me in behind and before. You lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Your future husband, chosen by God, will be a reflection of this divine knowledge, understanding you in ways you might not even comprehend. God knows the intricate details of your heart, 
and he knows what you need in a partner. So be prepared for surprises, for getting more than you expected. It's not just about fulfilling your desires. It's about surpassing them in ways that only God can orchestrate. Fourthly, your future husband will identify himself to you by understanding the unseen work. Imagine a garden where flowers bloom, not because they're given a tag that says blossom, but because they've been diligently nurtured and cared for. In the realm of relationships, it's much the same. Your future husband won't emerge magically when given the title. He'll reveal himself by tending to the responsibilities of a husband long before the ceremony. Let's break it down, drawing inspiration from the unseen growth that happens before the harvest. Picture a man in a congregation who, without a fancy title, embodies the essence of a pastor. He loves, teaches, and leads others, not because of the title, but because it's in his nature. This is the key distinction. Titles don't empower. They identify those already engaged in the work. Now, consider this in the context of your future husband. He won't be someone waiting for the official label before taking on the responsibilities. Instead, he's the man who's already demonstrating the characteristics associated with being a husband. It's not about waiting for a magical moment. It's about the ongoing process of growth, learning, and maturity. Look for the signs. Is he putting in the effort to excel in his career? Is he dedicated to personal growth, learning the art of service, leadership, and understanding how to love a woman? These are the indicators that he's preparing himself for the role of a husband. His actions speak louder than any title ever could. On the flip side, be cautious of those who see marriage as a distant destination and are merely biding their time in singleness. Marriage isn't a title you suddenly embrace. It's a culmination of a journey, a journey of self-discovery and preparation. Let's draw a parallel to the biblical story of Ruth and Boaz. Boaz didn't become a worthy husband prospect when Ruth suggested it. He had already shown his godly character in providing for her needs and being emotionally available. He was already doing the tasks of a husband without the official recognition. Number 5. Your future husband is not just a spectator in this dance of life. He's a partner, a participant. God orchestrates this intricate dance and the man you're destined for will identify himself through pursuit. In the uncharted territory of dating, there are no explicit guidelines in the Bible, but applying biblical principles illuminates the path. Think of biblical dating as a dance where the man leads and the woman is an active participant. If he's leading and dating, but you sense a lack of reciprocity, it's akin to a dance where one partner is passive. Your future husband won't merely lead, he'll actively pursue. It's a dance where both partners move in harmony, responding positively to each other. But what if he's not responding well to your invitations to pursue? Well, that might be a choreography of a different dance. God's leading you to the one meant for you, and when he appears, he'll be in sync with the divine rhythm. When he pursues and responds warmly to your positive cues, it's a powerful sign that he's stepping into the role of your future husband. Remember, this isn't just about dating. It's about a journey guided by God's hand. By walking alone now, you're aligning yourself with his plan. Your future husband will identify himself through the divine dance of pursuit and response. As the scripture says in Proverbs 3, 5-6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him, and he will make your path straight. So embrace the season of walking alone, for it's in this unexpected beauty of being set apart that your future husband will find you dancing in step with the rhythm of God's plan. Give a thumbs up if you resonated with this. Share it to spread the joy. And let's keep dancing to the divine tune of love. This is Mark signing off from a place where faith and love intersect. Until our next dance, may God's blessings guide your steps. Often we search for a partner 
who fits the mold of societal expectations or personal desires, yet forget that the real compass leading us to love dwells within the Holy Spirit. Consider this. A tree doesn't need to chase the sun to flourish. It simply grows naturally towards the light. Similarly, our hearts, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, gravitate towards the love that's destined for us. Scripture emboldens this divine connection. In Romans chapter 8, verse 14, it says, For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. This profound truth reminds us that the Holy Spirit is not a distant echo, but a clear guiding voice, leading us towards love that's carved in divine intention. Now, let's delve into an analogy that illuminates this understanding further. Imagine a gardener and a rose. The gardener tenderly nourishes the soil, waters the rose, and ensures it receives the golden rays of sun. The rose, in turn, blooms under this nurturing, displaying its full glory. In this tender narrative, the gardener symbolizes the Holy Spirit, and we are the roses. When we allow the Holy Spirit to nurture our hearts, we bloom into the person we're meant to be, ready to meet the one whose heart resonates with ours. The narrative of love doesn't urge a frantic search, but a gentle unfolding. And so, the Holy Spirit isn't a hurried whistle, but a soft whisper, always speaking, always guiding. The key is to quieten our hearts, to listen and to trust. The beauty of a soulmate isn't found in a frantic search, but in a divine rendezvous. And this divine meeting is orchestrated by the tender whispers of the Holy Spirit, guiding our steps aligning our paths with the one who's been crafted for us by heavenly hands. When the heart is attuned to the gentle murmur of the Holy Spirit, the journey towards love becomes a beautiful voyage, not a turbulent race. So, let us embrace the sacred whisper, let us trust the divine narrative, and let the Holy Spirit lead us to the heart that echoes our own under the loving gaze of our Creator. Indeed, the Holy Spirit is not just the whisper of love, it's the author of our love stories, penning every chapter with grace, hope, and divine assurance. So, dear souls, quiet your hearts, tune into the eternal whisper, and let the Holy Spirit usher you into the arms of the love destined for you. The nudges of the Holy Spirit are gentle yet profound, steering you towards a connection that resonates with heaven's rhythm. It's not about chasing affections blindly, but waiting on the Holy Spirit to spotlight the heart intertwined with yours in divine foresight. There's an exhilarating freedom in knowing that you don't need to search frantically for love. Instead, it's about aligning with God's plan, nestled in patience and trust. Remember the times you may have pursued someone, thinking they were the one, only to find a road ending in heartache. It's not a race meant for you, a futile race drains, but a divine introduction energizes and blossoms. Consider the profound simplicity in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5, where God affirms His knowledge and plans for you even before you were formed. It's a tender, reassuring promise that there is already a love story scripted for you in heaven's heart. Reflect on the essence of Christ's life, a beautiful testament of being led by the Holy Spirit. His every step was in sync with the Spirit showcasing a relationship so deep and unyielding. It's a sacred invite to allow such divine leadership in your quest for love too. Imagine a scene where amidst a bustling crowd, a calm, assured whisper of the Holy Spirit clears the haze and there stands the one chosen by God for you. It's not a chase, but a graceful unveiling. It's about a love that's patient, kind, and divinely orchestrated. As you continue walking in faith, nurturing a heart that's receptive to the Holy Spirit's whisper, a divine orchestration is at play. There's a rhythm of love that heaven has penned, and as you tune in to the Holy Spirit's gentle whispers, you're led to the heart that beats in harmony with yours. In your moments of prayer and reflection, invite the Holy Spirit to guide your steps in love. It's about fostering a relationship with God which in turn cultivates a fertile ground for a love that mirrors divine intention. As the narrative of your life unfolds, take heart in knowing that the Holy Spirit is at work, sowing the threads of a love story that reflects heaven's poetry. 
There's a serene assurance in knowing that God's got this, and a beautiful chapter of love is on the horizon, waiting for the right moment to be unveiled in your life. This journey may have its share of waiting and trusting, yet in that process, there's a beautiful molding, preparing you for a love that's worth every prayer, every hope, and every beat of your heart. With the Holy Spirit as your divine compass, the journey towards love is not a solitary one, but a heavenly orchestrated adventure that's bound to leave your heart in awe. The divine scripture reminds us of the profound wisdom that envelops us when we surrender our desires and trust in the Lord. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 encourages us to trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. It's a gentle reminder that our earthly perspective is limited, but the Heavenly Father's view is unbounded and full of foresight. In our modern lives, we often turn to digital companions like navigation apps and online platforms to find our way in the world and to seek love. They offer a semblance of control and a veil of knowledge. However, the true essence of guidance lies in the gentle nudge of the Holy Spirit, guiding our hearts towards love that's divine and pure. The Holy Spirit doesn't assert its guidance with a loud voice, but with a gentle whisper, nudging our hearts towards the path of righteousness. The scriptures narrate an awe-inspiring episode where amidst a storm, when fear had gripped the disciples, a soft voice of assurance from Jesus calmed the roaring waves. John chapter 6, Mark chapter 6. This soothing narrative illustrates the serene yet powerful guidance of the divine amidst life's tumultuous waves. Similarly, the journey towards finding our soulmate may sometimes feel like navigating through stormy seas. The waves of doubt, anxiety, and impatience may threaten to toss us around. Yet it's in these moments the Holy Spirit softly whispers to our hearts, assuring us that love is on the horizon. It encourages us to hold steadfast to our faith, reminding us that God's timing is perfect. Our part in this divine narrative is to cultivate a listening heart, to discern the whispers of the Holy Spirit leading us towards a love that's sanctified and destined. It's about relinquishing control and allowing the divine planner to orchestrate our love story with a melody that resonates with God's perfect plan. So, as we navigate the voyage of love, let's tune our hearts to the gentle whispers of the Holy Spirit. Let's embrace the patience the faith, and the divine anticipation of meeting the one who our soul loves. For in this sacred waiting, we are not just biding time, but we are nurturing a spiritual bond that will thrive under the blessings of the Holy Spirit. We live in a digital age where the GPS has become our go-to guide. It directs us to our desired destinations, avoiding traffic and ensuring efficiency. Similarly, our lives are flooded with information and opinions, shaping our perceptions about love and relationships. Yet, amidst this noise, the gentle whisper of the Holy Spirit seeks to guide us to a love that's enduring and divine. Consider the patience required in waiting the arrival of a well-anticipated package. You trust the process, knowing that in due time, your package will arrive at your doorstep. Similarly, trusting in God's timing for your love life is an exercise of faith and patience. The Holy Spirit whispers assurance to your heart, heralding the advent of a love designed in the heavens. The pressures of the world often propel us into a rush, a hurried quest to find love, mirroring the fleeting and instant gratifications championed by society. Yet Proverbs chapter 19, verse 21 reminds us, Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. The worldly rush is a stark contrast to the divine rhythm orchestrated by God, a rhythm that flourishes in patience and trust. In discerning the voice of the Holy Spirit, envision learning a new language, a language of peace, patience, and divine assurance. The language isn't inscribed in the fleeting whims of emotions, but in the enduring promises of God. The Bible, timeless treasure is the lexicon through which the Holy Spirit communicates, offering insights and affirmations about God's wonderful plans for your love life. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 16 through 17 reminds us, 
all scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. As you immerse yourself in the scriptures, you'll find your heart resonating with the divine whispers, affirming the arrival of a love that's pure and purposeful. Navigating through the sea of love, a divine compass is often what hearts seek. The cords of affection tug at us, sometimes throwing us into a whirlpool of emotions. Yet, amidst this tempest, lies a celestial whisper, a divine indication that guides our steps toward a harbor of true companionship. This narrative is a delicate exploration of a profound topic. God is telling you, till you end up together with that person, this will keep happening. It's a journey that beckons on faith, the relinquishment of fear, and a tender embrace of divine orchestration. In every blooming affection, there lurks the shadow of fear, the fear of the unknown, of heartbreak, of inadequacy. Yet, every scripture from the holy book echoes a singular truth. Love casts out fear. The sacred verse from 1 John 4.18 resonates, There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. This is the cornerstone of our narrative. Imagine a blossoming flower, ready to unfurl its petals to the morning sun. Yet, if a cloud of fear overshadows, its bloom hesitates. Similarly, in the sphere of love, fear acts as a veil, concealing the true essence and potential of a divine companionship. When God orchestrates a communion of hearts, it's a call to step into a realm beyond fear, into a haven of trust and growth. Now, envision the divine scenario where your path crosses with another, not by mere coincidence, but by a higher design. It's a meeting that holds the promise of completion, of wholeness. The Mighty, in His profound wisdom, has entwined your journey with another to foster growth to heal the unseen wounds and to unfold a deeper understanding of love. The voyage of love is not just about finding the right companion, but also about self-discovery and overcoming the internal tumult. Each interaction, each moment of joy, doubt, or sorrow with that person is a mirror reflecting what needs to be embraced or released. It's a divine narrative telling you that until you align with this heavenly design, certain experiences will keep revisiting. It's imperative to shed the cloak of fear and adorn a garb of love, trust, and acceptance. It's about seeing beyond the earthly flaws and recognizing the divine essence in each other. When this realization dawns, the superficial fears dissipate, unveiling a profound bond that's rooted in mutual growth and divine love. Ever wondered why there's a recurrent theme, a recurring scenario, or a repeated feeling whenever you are with a certain person? It's like a persistent echo urging you to pay attention. The Bible has beautifully illustrated the power and depth of love in 1 Corinthians 13, 4-7, expounding on its patience, kindness, and endurance. This scripture not just delineates the attributes of love, but also serves as a mirror reflecting the essence of divine love. It's often that, in the dance of love, we stumble upon our own fears, apprehensions, and sometimes our own past. There's a profound fear of getting close, of being truly seen, or of embracing the love that is being offered to us. The paradox lies in the fact that the very love which holds the power to heal us is what we shy away from. This could be due to a myriad of reasons, perhaps a past hurt, a lack of self-love, or the whispers of naysayers trying to cloud our judgment. Often, we become our own roadblocks in the journey towards a love that's healing, affirming, and enriching. The internal discord between how we view ourselves negatively and how our partner sees us in a light filled with love and acceptance, creates a turbulence. It's essential to recognize that this discord is not a deterrent, 
but a divine signal to work through our fears, to embrace love wholeheartedly, and to evolve together towards a higher love. The divine message is clear. The recurring feelings, the repeated scenarios, are not coincidental. They are God's way of telling you that there's a deeper level of love, trust, and understanding awaiting to be explored with this person. It's a call to transcend the superficial, to delve deeper into love, to heal together, and to build a bond that reflects the purity and sanctity of divine love. It's about allowing love to transform us, to become the best version of ourselves for each other, and to build a sanctuary of love that's grounded in trust, understanding, and divine guidance. The narrative of love is intertwined with divine signals, urging us to break free from the shackles of our fears, to trust in the journey, and to keep moving forward together towards a love that's eternal and divine. Discovering a connection with someone that goes beyond the superficial is a rare gift, a blessing that holds the promise of companionship, understanding, and love. It's like finding a serene harbor in a tumultuous sea, a place where your soul finds its match. Yet, with such a profound connection comes a journey often filled with challenges, fears, and uncertainties. These hurdles are not here to deter you, but to prepare you, to fortify the bond you share with that special someone. The divine narrative often unfolds in ways that we can scarcely comprehend. Yet, in every challenge faced, there's a whisper of God, nudging you closer towards that person with whom your destiny is intricately entwined. The fears, the doubts, they are but stepping stones on the path of a deeper understanding leading you towards a union that's molded in the furnace of trials and solidified in the essence of love and trust. The journey towards finding and accepting love may sometimes mirror the biblical journey of Moses leading the Israelites to the Promised Land. There are trials and fears and moments of doubt. Yet, with every step forward, there's an unfolding of a divine plan, a plan rooted in love, trust, and mutual growth. Your apprehensions, the fear of vulnerability, they are the Red Sea standing between you and your promised land of love. The fear of opening up, of being hurt, mirrors the fears faced by the Israelites. Yet, the divine message in this is clear. Face the fears, embrace the journey, and trust in the promise of love that's rooted in divine orchestration. Every disagreement, Every moment of anxiety is an invitation to delve deeper, to understand each other better, to evolve together towards a love that's pure, understanding, and forgiving. It's a call towards building a relationship that reflects the virtues of patience, understanding, and love, as elucidated in 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7. The essence of your journey is not to escape the fears, but to face them together, to grow through them, and to emerge stronger with a love that's tried, tested, and triumphant. It's about understanding that God's hand is in every experience, guiding, molding, and leading you towards a union that's divine, pure, and enduring. And remember, just as Proverbs 18.22 reminds us, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor with the Lord. The journey may be arduous, the fear is real, but the promise of a love that's divine and enduring is a treasure worth every trial, every step of faith taken towards achieving a union that's blessed and ordained by the heavens. When you are blessed with a companion who resonates with your soul, it's a celestial call to value cherish and nurture this bond. It beckons you to invest your heart and soul, to appreciate the uniqueness of your partner and the essence of what you share. The essence of divine love is about growing together, navigating through life's turbulence, and emerging stronger with every tide that attempts to drift you apart. It's only natural to harbor fears stemming from past disappointments, 
Yet, these fears are God's gentle reminders, encouraging you to break free from the shackles of past hurt and to fully embrace the present. It's like a divine nudge to open up, to let the walls down, and to let love in unreservedly. Ephesians 4, 31 and 32 reminds us to let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. The suppression of fear is the unveiling of happiness. When you allow yourself to transcend past fears and open up to your partner, you create a space of trust love, and endless possibilities. It's about experiencing the beauty of love, devoid of reservations. When minor misunderstandings attempt to create a rift, it's another divine sign urging you to hold tighter, to communicate, to understand, and to evolve together. It's God's way of telling you that what you have is a precious thing and worth fighting for, the trials are but a way to strengthen your bond, to remind you of the significance of patience, communication, and forgiveness in nurturing a lasting bond. As you tread the path of love, remember, every experience, every challenge is a divine message guiding you towards a love that's enduring and fulfilling. So, take a moment to understand, to appreciate, and to delve deeper into the blessings of the divine guidance in your relationship. For it's leading you towards a love that's ordained to last. Have you ever felt that gentle nudge in your heart? That unspoken message from above, urging you to open your heart to someone special, to stop hesitating, and let love flow freely? In this video, we'll explore a profound revelation about those gentle nudges. And that is... God is telling you to open your heart to that person immediately and stop blocking them. Let's delve deep into the depths of love, faith, and the divine guidance that may just change the course of your life. Make sure you open your heart up to this message from God. It's a message you don't want to miss. In the journey of life, most profound emotions are often hidden, locked away within our hearts. We tread carefully fearing the vulnerability that comes with revealing our true feelings. We fear that we'll be hurt, taken for granted, or used. Too many times we hold back, concealing our love, fearing rejection. But consider this, the love we keep concealed remains unspoken, unexpressed, and consequently, unrequited. Think of it like a farmer holding a seed. The seed belongs to him, he can sow it if he wishes, and if he doesn't, that's also fine. It's his decision to make. It's his seed, and it's his land. However, he cannot expect to harvest from a seed he does not sow. Hence, the seed concealed will not be sown, will not take root, will not blossom and bud, and will not feed anyone. Rather, such a seed will die without fulfilling its purpose. This scenario is explained similarly in Hebrews 11.4. He who observes the wind will not sow, and he who regards the clouds will not reap. It's true, the world is full of wickedness. Your fears are valid. Also, you may have gone through some difficult experiences in the past, which left you scarred and untrusting. However, God is using this video to let you know something. There is healing for you out there. There is love for you out there. The whispers of rejection, the echoes of no that may reverberate throughout your life, have left you scared to embrace love once more. Yet in this hesitation to express your love, you ultimately harm yourself. Love was never created to be a curse, but a blessing. Rejection is a bitter pill that life sometimes serves us, but it is an inevitability. However, it should not deter us from embracing love and laying our hearts bare when God gives us the opportunity to do so. The fear of being rejected and the dread of unreciprocated feelings are genuine concerns. But here's the truth. The absence of courage to show your love 
inflicts greater suffering on you. I've seen people hide their true feelings for someone they genuinely cared about because they were afraid of being rejected. But someone else came into that person's life and they lost the opportunity to be with them. We may say, well, if they were meant for me, they'd stay. Or they'd know I have strong affection for them. But it doesn't work that way. Each person has a role to play. People can often tell that you're opening your heart to their advances when you act accordingly. You'll appreciate someone assuming a connection with you that may not even be there. You want people to be honest and share their feelings for you. Likewise, you must learn to reciprocate that gesture when someone you love is coming close to you. Imagine expecting someone you invited into your home to come in without opening the door for them. If you don't give them a key or open the door, they aren't going to gain access into your home, no matter how much you tell them to come in. As we journey through life, we encounter those heart-soaring moments when our emotions towards someone runs deeply. These are the moments that you believe this is the person God wants you with. There are times when words escape us, when we stand tongue-tied, unable to muster the courage to voice our love. In these instances, let your actions speak for you. You don't need grand gestures or opulent displays of affection. It's the smallest things that matter most. True love isn't confined to words alone. It flourishes in deeds. The Apostle John wrote, Little children, believers, dear ones, let us not love merely in theory, with word or with tongue, giving lip service to compassion, but in action and in truth, in practice and sincerity. Because practical acts of love are more than words. 1 John 3.18 when you declare your love, someone may not take you seriously until they witness your actions. Demonstrating your love proves that you value them deeply. Even Jesus talked about love demonstrated through sacrifice. So when God brings someone into your life, when you begin to feel that strong nudge to draw close to them, to connect with them and be there for them, don't hold back. Show them you love them. Make that call, make that purchase, and take that step. You don't have to say a word. If that is the one, they'll know your heart is being laid bare. Our fears often extend beyond the boundaries of our hearts. We fear the judgments and opinions of others. Social status and expectations can be daunting hurdles. But in the enigmatic tapestry of life, Love often finds its place in the most unexpected corners. It can be elusive, but will find you when you least expect it. Maybe you once told yourself you were never going to love again. Or perhaps you're simply scared that you'll never find someone right for you. But being given the right person to journey through life with is one of the greatest blessings you could ever have. It'll make the journey easier. And the only way this can come into fruition is to make up your mind to take that risk, to give a life of love a chance. Listen, in order to find and truly lead a life rich in love and happiness, begin to open your heart to the one you adore. Maybe you think you aren't good enough for someone. However, love isn't contingent on perfection. Love is a gift that we all receive and expect to give regardless of who we are or what life has dealt us in the past. For the Christian ladies among us, Societal norms might have instilled certain reservations, but you're just as capable of love as anyone else on the earth. You are a loving child of a loving God. Do you know what that means? It means that you have God's love in you. This is the kind of love that isn't dependent on the receiver, but on the giver. Romans 5, 5. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Then in Galatians 5, 22 to 23, it tells us that love is the first fruit of the Spirit. Genuine love is a blessing gifted to us by God. If the person you open your heart to doesn't understand how to love you with Christ's love flowing from you, then they aren't the one God wants you to open your heart to. One of the reasons we fall into the trap of hurt and rejection is that we open our hearts to people who have never encountered Christ's love. When you meet the man God wants you to open your heart to, you'll see traces of that love in him as well. 
Christ's love puts the self behind and is willing to give and forgive, love and hold, sow and grow. That is the love of Christ. Each of us as children of God has Christ's ability within us to love without compromising our faith, dignity, and self-respect. But at the end of the day, it lies in our hands whether we let that love out or if we suppress it. Dear sister, when this divine love beats fervently within your heart, don't suppress it. Don't harm yourself by bearing the weight of unspoken emotions. Show that person how you feel. If they accept your love, it's a beautiful union. If they don't, you'll know that you've tried, granting yourself the peace that comes with knowing you gave it your all. In the grand mosaic of relationships, some of us refrain from expressing love, burdened by the pain of past heartbreaks. The trepidation of history repeating itself confines us. Yet let us remember that our past does not dictate our future. You won't necessarily face the same challenges in every relationship, especially if you're following the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Also, remember that rejection in the past doesn't mean rejection in the future. The past, as its name suggests, remains behind us. We mustn't grant it the privilege to interfere with our present. Every new relationship deserves to encounter the real you, not a facade. Isaiah 43.18 says, Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Let the past be the past. Don't lose the David in your life because you're still clinging to the Saul who failed you. Don't shy away from displaying love to that someone whom the Lord is nudging you to open up to, even if it's through your unique love language. Trust the Holy Spirit to help break yourself free and express love regardless of the haunting shadows of the past. Life is an unpredictable journey, and the sands of time are ever-shifting. Our realities are marked by change. Amidst life's uncertainty, we often find ourselves yearning for what could have been. Regret is a heavy burden to bear. Therefore, as the sands of time slip through our fingers, we should seize every opportunity to express our love. God will show you that He wants you to open your heart up and give you opportunities to do so. You must learn to identify those moments and embrace them. Today's lost opportunities may be replaced by tomorrow's regrets. Don't allow your unspoken love to leave you with a resounding, if only. Love thrives not in words, but in actions. When words fail to convey your message, actions can bridge the gap. So stop holding back and start opening your heart by the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Tell that special someone in your life that you love them. Show them and stop blocking them. Your excuses won't heal you or change what's happened. They will only continue to limit your experience and the beauty that awaits you in the Lord. I pray that you'll meet the one chosen to be your partner, the one God has called to be with you. And I pray that your love will be reciprocated in the ways your heart desires. Amen.